Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dark Messenger Vampire Assassin. This is part two of Forgotten Veil. Vale. Whoa. And hang on, hang on. Go away. Part two of Forgotten Veil. Vale. Part four of Touching the Sky. I welcome you all back, and I want to apologize for part one of Forgotten Veil. Vale. I was really um, not feeling great, contending with some congestion. I'm hoping this one will be a little bit better. I just kept clearing my throat. I could not seem to clear my throat. Where am I going? I don't think this is going to take me anywhere. Oh, jeez. Okay, he doesn't see us yet. Let's... Jump clear here and see what's going on. This doesn't really go anywhere. There we go. Ugh, I can barely see him. Man. I'm going to mark him. Here you are. Makes all the difference. That first shot, one of those bounce off the rock deals. All right, looks like we we're gonna have to find our way up to higher ground here to make it anywhere. This river just isn't an option. So, pretty sure I'm gonna have to go back the other way. I really don't want to go slogging back through that cave we just came out of. So we're going to see where we go this way. Although, this direction feels like the wrong direction. Um, it's kind of a lot of ore around here. So those of you who are paying attention to the website, couchwarrior.tv. I put a post up there a couple days ago um, announcing the fact that my plan was, following this quest line, to have Centrosi go back to school and get a degree, so to speak. Um, really what I'm talking about is doing the Mage College quest line. And the reason I want to do that is because I've started to take an interest in the idea of pursuing some illusion with this character, and it seems like the most efficient way to go about it. People have been asking me why I want to do that, and to be honest with you, the simple truth is that I'm interested in quiet casting, not necessarily because quiet casting is going to help me with spells, but, well, because I don't use a heck of a lot of spells, at least not right now, but quiet casting also helps with shouts, and I use shouts a lot. And I think there were, there's probably more shouts that I would use if I was able to, to use them quietly. So I think we just did a big loop. We did. All right. Well, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to double back here. So I'm gonna try to make it quick. Anyway, that's something that. It's not exactly obvious with quiet casting, but it does affect shouts, and there are quite a few shouts that would be interesting to be able to use in complete silence. So, I think um, I am going to do the Mage College quest line following this one, at least get a good start on it. Plus, that'll get me in a place where I can do some training and stuff like that. And at this level, if I really want to uh, acquire perks and so forth at this level, uh, training is going to be a must if I don't want to just drive myself completely crazy. So I think I'll probably pursue that next. And as a matter of fact, you can find any announcements that I post outside of things just mentioned in these videos. You can always find that stuff on the website. What is this? kind of random. Alright. There was a bridge 
over here. We are going to continue down this way and see what we encounter. I'm guessing it's going to be Falmer. Just a guess. This big fella. How many shots? Ugh, two. Assuming I can hit the second. Yes. What is he? Frost giant. What is this? Emerald paragon. Okay, I've heard about these. I can't recall what to use them for, but I'm going to keep it. Poor bastard. Sucks being the zookeeper. Wow. Getting some nice views here, that's for sure. I might pause here a moment to check it out. Wow. Okay, moving on. I did actually stand there for a while and check it out, so I spliced out that part where I was just kind of standing there. Um, but i it's amazing. The drops are dizzying. All right, what do we got here? Lost. Who's hiding? There's somebody there. Invaluable, that aura whisper. Let's make this a two-shot deal. Come on. You know you want this. There we go. Ah, that was a good one. That was a uh, almost parallel shot. So I felt like that one was pretty safe. It seems to me that a problem like that, I don't really know how game development works, but it seems like it would be the sort of problem that would be difficult to correct with a patch. Like, 
you know, there could be thousands of hours spent adjusting the geometry to accommodate fixing that problem. I mean, I don't really know. I don't understand how it works unless there's some way to make a, an arrow or give the uh, arrow the ability to pass through objects at certain angles or certain depths. I'm not really sure ah. how it works. Man, that's a patch I would grab right away if I could. <laughs> but, alas... here that would be pretty sweet if you could take that veiled deer hide and make yourself a glowing set of fur armor that would be quite cool that's one thing I've actually considered with this character at some point when maybe you know um, I'd, I've advanced a little bit more along my assassin path of just making myself a full set of fur armor and then enchanting it with all the things I need and kind of going ghetto. All right, this shot is probably not going to work. Yeah, yeah, I think I succeeded in getting his attention. Look at he's kind of doubling back. As close to the edge as I can. Oh, did you see that? It kind of went, for a second, it went to the kill cam and then cut out. Oh, man. Yeah, that's an impossible shot. Really hard. He's moving a lot, too, so. Ugh, oh, what is up? Look at that. See? Yeah, that's probably not a shot I can make. So we got to look for a better position to take it. This is probably going to be just as bad. The angle is just, there's too much in the foreground. So let's go check out this so we don't get flanked first, and then we'll, we'll move down there. We kind of know what's going on down there, so let's go check this out. Always use those. One interesting play style for the assassin, especially when you're going through the Dark Brotherhood quest line, if you're using the bow, and this is just um, an RP kind of thing, right? Where for role playing purposes, I I kind of play around with this idea, you know, of of trying to remain anonymous, remain secret when carrying out a mission I'll actually oh, another one kill cam but no joy I will actually take forsworn arrows and falmer arrows and bows and I will use them to do my assassinations and come on oh Jesus are you kidding oh Yeah, these downward angles are killing me. I'm just going to have to go down to the top of the bridge and just pluck them off at, cr at close range. So annoying. But I'll actually, you know, perform my assassinations with Falmer arrows. The idea being, right, that I'm covering my tracks, I'm making it look like someone else did it. I don't know. I don't know why I do that. It's kind of fun. But usually those are kind of a one-shot deal, so I'll take my regular bow you know, and I'll just load up a Falmer arrow when I make the kill or something. This looks like something that should be taken. Uh-huh. Excellent. We'll take that. And 
on that. Very soon, I'm going to make an assassin-focused enchanting video. Um, this will probably be for Death Mentor, and then also I'll be doing an assassin-focused alchemy video. But one of the things I'm actually working toward is creating a really good strategy for archers fighting dragons and kind of a specialized bow for that purpose. So one of the things that that I suggest trying, I've done in the past, that's worked really well for me and, and you might want to try as well, I don't know, but uh, I, I craft the best bow that I can, you know, and I, I improve it as much as I possibly can and then enchant it. I enchant it with something like flame, for example, or shock. And then when fighting against dragons, I will use a poison that is a weakness to fire or a weakness to shock. And it's interesting because the poisons will apply themselves first before the bow damage. So you can effectively, with, you know, if you're good at making poisons, you can significantly increase the fire and shock damage of a shot on top of your bow damage with the simple application of a weakness poison like that. Um, pretty amazing stuff. Pretty cool when you stack it all up like that. Well, thank you again for watching another episode. I hope to catch you for part three of Forgotten Veil. Vale. Thank you for watching another episode in the Dark Messenger series. Please feel free to rate, like, and subscribe. It helps me a lot. You can follow the story at couchwarrior.tv or on Twitter at couchwarriortv. Thank you.